you, Dr. Liang, for the prayer. And thank you, everybody, for listening today. We praise God for another day of worship, wherein we can worship God in spirit and in truth. The title of my sermon today is God's Judgment. The word judgment is an act of judging. It is derived from the word judge, and the word judge is derived from the Latin word judex, which has three meanings. The first meaning of the word judex is to investigate. The second meaning is the act of hearing the case. And the third meaning is the punishment for the violators of the law. This meaning of the word judex coincide with the three stages of God's judgment, such as the premillennial judgment, the millennial judgment, and the post-millennial judgment. Millennial means 1,000 years of judgment in heaven. And according to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we are going to judge with Christ a thousand years in heaven. Everyone who is faithful to Jesus and keep his commandments will reign with Christ and will judge with him 1,000 years in heaven. But before the judgment in heaven, there will be premillennial judgment. And according to the book of Daniel chapter 8, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And after the cleansing of the sanctuary, that starts the premillennial judgment. The, according to the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 6, the God has appointed a day for a year related to biblical hermeneutics. So 2,300 days equals 2,300 years. And the beginning of the counting of the 2,300 years is from the year 457 BC when King Artaxerxes issued a decree to rebuild Jerusalem. And that is found in Daniel chapter 9, verse 25. So counting from 457 BC, 2,300 days or years ended in 1844. Sometime in October 1844, based on the sanctuary service, the high priest goes into the most holy place to make atonement for the sin of the people. So in like manner, Jesus Christ entered into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, making atonement for us. And that is the beginning of what we call pre-millennial judgment. So the pre-millennial judgment had been going on since 1844. And the premillennial judgment goes with the, the preaching of the gospel all over the world. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, the Lord said, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So the message of the 2,300 years prophecy is related to the end time, to the last days. And before the end of time, before the end of this world, the Lord said to his disciples, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even up to the end of the world. So before the end of this world, before Jesus comes again to do the millennial judgment with us, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ must be preached all over the world. And we needed to teach all people of all nations to observe all things whatsoever God has commanded. And that is the assurance that God has given that he is with us even up to the end of the world. And Paul testified in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, that he is not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. So when we preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, they that believe are being saved. 
they are justified. We are justified by faith in Christ Jesus when we believe and accept him as our personal savior. And in that um, judgment, the judgment of God, according to the Bible, is going to be worldwide for all generations of men, from Adam up to the very last individual that will ever live in this world, everyone will face the judgment of God, whether saints or sinners. The judgment of God will be righteous, it will be perfect, it will be upright, it will be according to whatever things we have done on earth, whether it be good or whether it be evil. There are two sides in the judgment of God. There is the positive and the negative side of God's judgment. It is positive because it is rewarding to those who are righteous. But it is negative. It is condemnation to those who are wicked. So those are the two sides of the judgment of God. And God's judgment will be according to the law. The Ten Commandments of God will be the basis of the judgment of God. The Ten Commandments of God, the original is inside the Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. And these Ten Commandments of God can never be changed by any man or any individual or any institution or any religion. Because um, it is forever. It is eternal. And according to Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 to 15, those who did not learn to do the will of God, those who did not learn to obey God's commandments, will not be permitted to enter into the pearly gates of heaven. Now, let's go into the detail of this, because what I am saying to you is not my own. It is based from the word of God. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 7, it says, Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. So it's now in the present tense. The judgment of God is going on right now in heaven. It has come. And it has started since 1844. And let's go to the detail in at the beginning in Genesis chapter 18, verses 24 to 25, please open your Bible with me so that we can be well grounded in the Holy Bible. Genesis chapter 18, verses 24 up to 25. Per adventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Wilt thou destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? So when God do his judgment, it will be right, it will be perfect. He will judge both the wicked and the righteous. Now let's continue to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 10. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 10. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 10 says, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall the thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. So the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth from north, south, east, and west, all over the world. The Lord shall judge everybody, including his adversaries including those who did not obey the Lord's command, including the, the righteous. God will judge everyone. Let's go to Psalm chapter 7, verse 8. Psalms chapter 7, and verse 8.
In Psalms chapter 7, verse 8, the Bible says, The Lord shall judge the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. So the Lord shall judge the people. He will judge us according to our righteousness and according to our integrity. If we live with integrity in this world, the judgment will be a glorious day. But if we live wickedly in this world, the judgment will be a sad day because that will be condemnation. Let's proceed to Psalms chapter 9, verse 8. In Psalms chapter 9, verse 8, it says, And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in righteousness and uprightness. So the Lord will judge the world in righteousness. God is a righteous judge, and his judgment is upright. It is without fault. Let's proceed to Psalm chapter 43, verse 1. The reason why I would like you to open your Bible is so that you will be well grounded into the word of God. Psalm chapter 43, verse 1. King David said, Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. So even King David himself, he asked God to judge him. And we can face the judgment of God boldly if we live righteously. Let's go to Psalm chapter 72, verse 2. Psalm chapter 72 and verse 2. It says, He shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. So the poor and the rich, everybody in the world, God will judge righteously. Let's go to Psalms chapter 75 verse 2. Psalm 75 and verse 2. When I shall receive the congregation, I will judge uprightly. So even the congregation, even the church will be judged and his judgment will be upright. It will be, it will be correct. It will be perfect. Let's proceed to Psalm 96 verse 10. Psalm 96 verse 10. It says, say among the hidden that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be established, and it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. See, God's judgment will be righteous. He will judge the people righteously. And what does it say in Psalm 98 verse 9? Psalm 98 verse 9 says, before the Lord, for he cometh to judge the earth with righteousness, and shall he judge the world and the people with equity. So the Lord is coming. Jesus is coming again. He who is serving as our lawyer in the judgment court in heaven will ultimately be the judge. Have you ever been in a court where your lawyer is also your judge? What is the possibility of winning the case if your lawyer is also your judge? It's 100% sure of winning the case. Jesus Christ is our lawyer in the judgment court in heaven. And our salvation is 100% sure because he is also going to be the judge. In Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4. Please follow me to Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hook. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So the war between nations will be ended 
because he shall judge among the nations. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 33, verse 22. 33, verse 22 of Isaiah. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawmaker, the Lord is our king, he will save us. So the Lord is not only the judge, he is also the lawmaker, he is also our king. And the Lord has given us assurance that he will save us. Everyone who believe in him will be saved. Let's proceed to Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 8. Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 8. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee and accomplish mine anger upon thee and I will judge thee according to thy ways and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And Prophet Ezekiel is speaking here about abominations. Did you know that not all worship are acceptable to God and not all prayers are acceptable to God? In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9, the Bible says, if we put away our, tear, our ears from hearing the law, even our prayers are abominable unto God. So there are prayers that are not acceptable to God. Prayers of people who does not listen to the word of God, who does not listen to the law of God. You now, there's a lot of lawlessness in this world today. Even among professing Christian denominations, about a thousand religious denominations now in the world, mostly of them are teaching that you don't need to obey God's law anymore. Because since Jesus died at the cross, the law has ended. But it is contrary to the word of the Lord Jesus Christ himself when he said, I did not come to destroy the law or the prophet. He said, think not. Just to think that God abolished his law is already a violation. Much more if we disobey God's law and if we teach others that there is no more law, that we can do anything according to our wish. There's a lot of Churches today are teaching that. If we do that, even our prayers are abomination unto the Lord. And even our worship, if we worship but we are not willing to obey God's law, the Lord said in Matthew chapter 15 verse 9 that even the worship is not acceptable unto God. So we needed really to obey the law of God, not in order to be saved, but as an evidence, as a fruit of being saved. As a fruit of our love. That's why Jesus said in John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Because keeping the commandments of God is the evidence of our love. It is the fruit of our faith. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. It says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So, God will bring every work into judgment. It is based upon his law, upon his Ten Commandments law. Whether what we have done is good or evil, God will bring every work into judgment. And in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 20. What book did I say? Ezekiel chapter 33 
and verse 20. It says, ye say, Yet ye say, The way of the Lord is not equal. O ye house of Israel, I will judge you, everyone, after his ways. So God will judge everyone after our ways, whether our ways is right or wrong, whether what we did is good or evil, God will judge us. It is God who will judge us. And according to John chapter 5, verse 22, please follow me to John chapter 5, verse 22. John chapter 5 and verse 22. The Bible says, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So the Father judgeth no man. It's the Son. It's Jesus Christ, the Son of God, whom the Father hath committed all judgment from the very beginning of this world up to the end of this world. God the Father had committed to his son everything about the judgment. Please follow me to John chapter 12, verse 48. John 12, 48. He that rejected me and received not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last days. So the words that the Lord has spoken shall judge everyone in the last days. Whether we follow the word of God or we disobey the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall face, we shall give an account on the judgment day. Let's Proceed to John chapter 18, verse 31. John chapter 18 and verse 31. Then said Pilate unto them, Take him, ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. So even King Pilate, when he judged, he judged according to the law. And God will judge everyone according to the law and according to whatever things we have done on earth, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's proceed to Acts chapter 17, verse 31. Acts 17, 31. Seventeen thirty-one of the book of Acts. The Bible says, because he had appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained, whereof he had given assurance unto all men, in that he had raised him from the dead. So Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead, was appointed. And God had appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. And let's proceed to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 to 18. 1 Thessalonians First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verses Let's start with verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of our Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of archangel, with a trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we be with the Lord forever. You know, there's a common 
misunderstanding today among religious denominations that when you die, you go directly to heaven as if our death is the way to heaven. But that is not what the Bible say. Our loved ones who died, whether they are righteous or wicked, they are not yet in heaven. They are resting in peace. They are in, in the grave. They are not yet in heaven looking down at us. And the wicked are not yet in the hell of fire being punished by God for a long, long time. That is not the doctrine of the Bible. The Bible says that when we die, we return to dust. Our body that came from the dust, it returned to dust, got decomposed and returned to dust. The breath of life, the day we die, the breath of life returns to God because our life is borrowed from God. And when Jesus shall come again, that will be the day when we will go to heaven. That we call that the rapture. Um, we will be raptured at the same time. It's not one by one when we die. The rapture will take place at the same time when Jesus comes again. The dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are still alive shall be caught up together with them. See, if they are already in heaven, what is the use of Jesus to come back? What to, to take us to heaven if we are already in heaven when we die? It's a common sense. Uh, it's not a, a logical to say that the dead are already in heaven because they will, we will be there when Jesus comes again at the same time. That is very clear in the Bible. So if someone tells you that when you die, you go directly to heaven, do not believe it because it is not the correct doctrine of the Bible. The Bible plainly tells us that death is but resting in peace. Now let's go to The next verse in First Thessalonians chapter two. Let's, let me let, let me look at my note. Let's proceed to to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation chapter 20 actually tells us the, the millennial judgment and the post-millennial. Revelation chapter 20. In Revelation chapter 20, and let's start with verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a cell upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them in judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither worshipped, neither had received his mark upon their forehead, nor upon their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years is finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years expire, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breast of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints 
about the beloved city and the fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured it. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw the great white throne and him that sat on it, for whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged, out of those things which written in the books according to the works. And the sea gave up the dead which are in it, and the death and the hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So when we go to heaven to judge with Christ a thousand years, there will be three kinds of books there in heaven. There is the book of life where the names of everyone who believe the Lord Jesus Christ and keep God's commandments are written. There is also the book of remembrance where everything we did on earth is recorded. And there is also the book of death where the names of those who rejected the Lord Jesus Christ are written, including those who worship the beast in his image, their names are written in the book of death. So it has to do with worship. We needed to worship the true God who created the heavens and the earth and not the false God who is being described as the beast in his image. If you want to know the detail about this beast in Revelation chapter 13, have you seen a beast with seven heads and ten horns? These are not literal beasts. This is a religious political power that will strive to organize the world into one world government and one world church according to Revelation chapter 17. And their power will be only one hour, which is equivalent to two weeks. And, and the Lord will destroy those who worship the beast in his image. But during the thousand years judgment in heaven, we will reign with Christ and we shall judge with him. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3, we will judge including the angels. So if we are going to judge with Christ, we really needed to be obedient to God's law because this will be the basis of the judgment. We will be disqualified to judge with him if we are ignorant of the law of God. And if we do not put it into practice, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 22, verses 13 and 14. And from verse 14, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers, warmongers, murderers, idolaters, whoever love it and make it alive. So who are those that are blessed? Those who do the commandments of God. Those who are faithfully ob obedient to the Ten Commandments of God. They will be permitted to enter into the gates of heaven. But those who did not learn to obey God's commandment now, they are not blessed and they will be outside together with the dogs, the sorcerers, the warmingers, the prostitutes, and those who are working with prostitutes, the murderers and idolaters. They will be left outside the gate. They will not be permitted to enter into the holy city of God. Did you know how big is the holy city of God and the house of our Father in heaven? It's 12,000 for long, equivalent to 1,500 miles high. The length, the width are equal. Have you seen a, a, a city, a building that is 1,500 miles high and 1,500 miles length, the width and the are equal? 
That's, that's, that's the house of God. The Lord said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, the Lord said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So there's 1,000 years judgment in heaven together with the Lord. We who had been faithfully obedient to the Lord, everyone who believed God and learned to obey God's will by being obedient to God's Ten Commandments will be permitted to enter into the pearly gates. But those who did not learn to obey and teach others not to obey the commandments of God will not be permitted to enter into the gates of heaven. So, after the 1,000 years judgment in heaven, there will be the second resurrection. Those who did not believe in the Lord will be resurrected for condemnation. As it is written in Hebrews chapter 9, some people say, why is there going to be a judgment after death? But let's open in, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, 27, and 28. Hebrews chapter 9, 27, and 28. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So death is not the end of everything. There's still a judgment after death. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So as Jesus Christ died once and was resurrected, he will come again. He will come again. And those who are waiting for him, those are the Adventists, those who are waiting for him, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So the Lord is going to save the Adventists, those who are waiting, those who are eagerly waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ coming because he is coming again to take us home. And we will judge with him a thousand years in heaven. Could you imagine a thousand years reigning with Christ and judging with him in heaven? We didn't even live a hundred years on earth. But if we are faithful to Jesus, we will reign with him and judge with him a thousand years in heaven. And then after a thousand years in heaven, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, the house of our father, of our God, will descend to this planet earth. And soon as the holy city descended, the wicked will be resurrected and there are as many as the sand of the sea. And because there are many under the leadership of Satan, they will think to fight against the holy city. But when they are on the act of fighting against the holy city, the fire will come down from heaven and consume the wicked with fervent heat. And after this earth is purified with fervent heat, God will make this world a paradise again. And that is where we would like to be. That is the plan of God concerning our salvation. We would like to be in that holy city, the city of our God. When the judgment is over, the Lord will make this world a paradise again. Just like when he created it in the beginning, this world was a paradise. God will make this world a paradise again in, in that new heavens and new earth. The prophet Isaiah said, every Saturday, will be the day of worship. And after the Sabbath day, we shall come out of the city, we shall plant vineyards, and we shall enjoy the work of our hands forever. So life in the new heaven and the new earth is real. It's real life. It's, it's a wholesome. It's very, it's a perfect kind of life where, where God is going to be with us and there will be no more pain, no more war, no more pandemic, no more sickness, no more death. That's why the Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. In that life everlasting, 
in the new heavens and the new earth. We would like you to be with us. If we believe in Jesus, if we keep his commandments, surely we shall reign with Christ and we shall judge with him a thousand years in heaven. My prayer is that all of us and all those listening to us today will have that privilege to reign with Christ and to judge with him a thousand years in heaven. I pray that the Holy Spirit will empower us because right now our power is not in us. It's in the Holy Spirit. As long as the Holy Spirit is dwelling within our hearts, we have the power to overcome the world. We can obey God's commandment as long as the Holy Spirit is dwelling within us. And the Lord has promised, I will put my spirit within you and you will be able to walk according to my divine statutes. For it is not by man's own might nor power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Will you invite God's Holy Spirit to dwell within your hearts today? Are you willing to be possessed by God's Holy Spirit and to walk with the Lord right now while we are still in this world? Do you love the Lord? Have you accepted him as your personal savior? Are you willing to receive him as king of your life? And if we do, we will reign with him. We will judge with him and we will live with him everlasting in that new heavens and the new earth. My prayer is that all of us will learn to obey God's will, that all of us will be empowered by God's Holy Spirit so that while we are waiting for his son return, we will also preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to the world. Because there are two things that the world, that the Lord is, is waiting. He is waiting for his gospel to be preached all over the world to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people. And through this uh, internet, we are able to reach the whole world. These messages that we are preaching goes up to Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Iraq. It goes all over the world. It goes to China. It goes to India. It goes to the Philippines. It goes to every part of the world, including those that are remote areas that has never been reached by the gospel. Everyone who uses the internet has the privilege to know the truth as it is in Jesus. So it is my prayer that the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ will finally be proclaimed throughout the whole world. And let us hold fast because we can only face the judgment of God boldly if we are faithful to the Lord, if we keep his commandments and if we share the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you until the coming of our Lord is my prayer. Let us pray. Our dear loving Heavenly Father, we would like to thank you for Jesus. We would like to thank you for the Holy Bible. We would like to thank you for your promise that the day is coming when we will reign with Christ and judge with him a thousand years in heaven. We pray, Father God, that you empower us with your Holy Spirit, that we may be worthy to reign with you and to judge with our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes again. Thank you for the assurance you have given that everyone who believe in you will not perish, but will have everlasting life.